Hello, we are Geeks Assembled. And hello, hello. Hello, that's Susan over there. <laughs> I'm Lee. Um, and we've got together today to discuss a 1939 movie, um, which is set in the deep south of America um, during the backdrop of the uh, American Civil War. Um, a story of, what should I say, love? lust um and just downright um bitchiness from one of the leading actresses in my opinion um we are talking gone with the wind mm -hmm. um which as first time i've sat through this fully i've i've you know i've been 20 minutes here 10 minutes there usually when it's on the tv but this time i've sat all the way through and you know what just short of four hours long, just short by about three, four minutes of four, four hours. Um, but I will, I digress. I will go over to Susan for the opening thoughts on um, Gone with the Wind. All right, um, I've, I've seen, like Lisa, actually bits and pieces of this throughout the years. Um, <clears throat> I didn't, uh, I didn't quite know the story, but it's a bit like, a, it's a bit the way um, Lucy Redfern or whatever her last name is, is in uh, Dracula. Just all of these women uh, see, like seeking a couple with all of these, you know, debonair Southern gents and stuff. And then this one guy who's sort of like um, Petruchio in the, in the taming of the shrew mm -hmm. he, he tries to tame the, the the wildest of them all the the interesting lady scarlett o'hara mm. <laughs> and, and her and her father and mother and um and black servant oh my god the the whole thing about the servant dude in this oh my gosh you know slavery sucks fucking sucks ass and the, the this is right these people are right in the process of defending it and so you know all these people who are right now in the u.s all these fucking republicans trying to change the the narrative the, the to just to just kind of keep encouraging this bullshit reality that 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 that's you know, really present in all these Southern bells and all of these, uh, these crazy gentlemen of, of, of gentrified, um, you know, beasts actually, because they were kind of beastly, mm -hmm. except for, except for there's two or three that were, that were very, you know, um, shall we say, uh just not as not as brutal as the rest i think that, that, that's where i'm going to go with that and um so I, I really struggled with this watching this through um the the way that women are portrayed is uh rough and the way that men are portrayed is also rough and brutal and um it's all done with like this veneer, uh, this this shellac of, um, of you know culture and society and wealth, and everybody's after the money. And yes, there were lots of instances where where these these plantation owners lost their plantation. But the the important thing was to remember that that these plantation owners needed to be cut down to size because like that's just the way and i know that i'm talking much like a yankee but the way that they were talking about like harboring the yankees i mean that was also kind of like oh crikey and so um yeah uh it was four hours long mm. and i was not you know not ready for that kind of commitment to a movie. 
two hours <laughs> is a is a decent length of time for for a movie. So double that, and you better have something extraordinary, some extraordinary uh, development throughout the thing. And um, yeah, the backdrop of the war. I can see why they, they put it there so that they could get the, the men away from the women for a second. But they came back even before the end of the war. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, deserters or whatever. <coughs> Bit challenging there. And uh, I guess this is the, this is the, the weekend of we're talking about deserters. Um, because the men in, in this in Gone with the Wind are, and one of the, the, the main characters in the next movie that we were watching is a deserter as well. Um, interesting interesting uh, how, how we find these, these common threads in, in this great tapestry of Geeks Assemble, but <laughs> my gosh, it's just like, it's rough, it's hardcore. Um, I, yeah, slavery fucking sucks, and this uh, this kind of balancing all of these things on on the knife edge of, of financial ruin. You know, they should have been ruined. That's just really what they should, because they were they were they were they had no uh, systematic systematic wealth. The, mm -hmm. uh, stuff that goes through through the years that, that would remain they have they have invested in people people are people are liable to run away or scoot or die or get treated badly and become unreasonable but you know what why are you talking about reasonable when we're talking about slavery and um and so there's a character named Mammy, and the, and she is the the house, uh, you know, the house person, and she takes care of the babies and the food and the, the environment and stuff like that. She's she's amazing, and I really think that, you know, that, that making uh, making a Mammy. Uh, if you wanted to do a sequel to Gone with the Wind, I know that there is one named Scarlet, but I um, haven't seen that all the way through either. Um, but also, if you wanted to do a real one, you should do one on the, that on Mammy and, and those guys, those, those guys as they leave slavery and what, what that looks like. Um, they, this is set in Georgia. And Georgia is right now undergoing some uh, changes due to the, the 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 kind of quality that that they are expecting from the conservative party here. I mean, they we're trying to overcome that. So that's, as people who have a vested interest in seeing democracy and and uh, fair play and uh, and honesty, integrity, yeah. And so, right. So that's that's my um, my opening thoughts on this. And uh, yeah, back over to you, Lee. Yeah, thanks. Um, as we've mentioned, it's just short of four hours, um, and it's it is a long, hard slog to get through to watch this from beginning to end. Um, yep. My personal opinion: this story could have been told in two and a half hours long. Mm -hmm. Two and a half hours. I just can't understand why they needed to spread it out for four. Um, but it's it won it's won awards. It won you know won won the Oscars and the actors won Oscars and stuff like that. Um, 
yeah, I mean, it's it's a film about when it was when it was made in thirty nine or released in nineteen thirty nine. Um, slavery wasn't fought; it didn't come into anybody's conscience about slavery back then. But it was only um, it was only seventy years after the yeah, the actual so, emancipation of a uh, pro proclamation mm. done by Lincoln. Yeah, it's only I would say in the, in the last what fifty years that um, it's been brought to the front of people's um, uh, knowledge about what happened back then, because um, back then it, it was just. Uh, I know it's bad to say, but it was just it was the norm, wasn't it? It was the it was the normal thing. What was what happened back then? Um, but luckily, people saw sense. I mean, it's still good. It is still going on today in in certain places, yep. in certain countries. Um, but gone with the wind. But it, but it was it's a different kind of slavery. This, this was this was slavery of. Plantation slavery, wasn't it? The, Plantation um, slavery, right. Yeah. Um, but what you've got to look at this film is they were depicting historical, his history. For them, it was history. For us, it's hist further back history. Um, you can't change history. You can change the future, but you can't change history. Um, so you have to take that into account with this movie. Um, yeah, it's... Um, Vivian Lee playing Scarlett O'Hara, she was sort of virtually an unknown actress at the time. So, and at a young age as well, I think she was 20, 23, 24 when she got the part. Yeah. Um, and Clark Gable as Rhett, Rhett Butler, um, the, the film company wanted him for the part, but they couldn't get him until two years after you know, they decided to make this movie. So they, they were waiting for Clark Gable to become free to play the part. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where it was done in 39. Um, but yeah, the, the, the acting, I can't, you can't fault the acting. Even the supporting cast, you can't um, fault the acting. Uh, you've mentioned Mammy. Um, I thought she was a wonderful character. Um, played by uh, Hattie McDaniel. Yep. And who won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress? Yep. But, of course, she was segregated at the ceremonies, at the, at the Oscar ceremony. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that happened all over the place at that time period, segregation. Um, yeah. Um, but she's. A wonderful actress. Yeah, she is. Um, she was in loads and loads of movies. She she might have been tape casting a few, playing this sort of character, but it was a living for her. She, you know, um, and she made she did the best she could. Yeah. Uh, and she, the best she did was win win an Oscar. So you know, big thumbs up to her for that. Um. Yeah, de depicting as you said, depicting the civil the civil war. It was only only part of the movie. You can say they came out of the of the civil war into the um, the rebuilding of America, didn't they? Sort of section, um, which was because uh, I always get confused. I know I'm only a, I'm a stupid uh, British man, but um, I can never remember which side won over there. <laughs> There, there was the Union and the Confederacy. The Union yeah, side won. I, I get them confused. <laughs> um, just let me, let me, let me. Union proud. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, was that is that is that the blue or the grey? The Union was blue and the Confederacy was grey. Because I see them in movies all the time, but I, I, I just confuse which was which. No, well, that's why. That's why when the the blue the blue soldiers came. Came into her house, that uh, you know, even the servants shot him and yeah. tried to drive him out. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
uh, for me, though, um, I say that's what sort of me up your thoughts on this, but going along, like, seeing there's only two of us here, we can sort of mix this up as we usually do. I thought Scarlett Harrow was a right bitch. Yeah. Um, she was, well, first off, she was sort of stalking, oh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Wilkes. Wilkes, yeah, yeah. He Ashley. Had no, yeah, Ashley, that's it. She was stalking him. And, and he was played by... Uh, a British actor, Leslie Howard. Yeah. Who who mysteriously disappeared in an aircraft who was shot down by the Germans during the war. Or just after the war, I can't remember which. Oh, sad. So, and, and yeah, so just, you know, he was sort of becoming big and then he was gone. Um, yeah, she was sort of stalking him. And when things didn't go her way, she made things bad for other people. She was a sp spoiled woman. Yes. Um, she did. She really came off badly for me. But yeah. Scarlett Harris, you know, the history of movies, Scarlett Harris is supposed to be a, a wonderful person. I'm thinking, she's not. <laughs> no, I didn't, uh, think, I didn't think so. I thought that, that she was, she was all this, uh, what is it? What does she say? Fiddle dee dee, fiddle dee da, you know, that thing. Fiddle dee dee. Uh, um, you know, she's trying, she's supposedly that that person, but actually she's like the, she's trying to be a home wrecker. She's trying to break mm -hmm. up those, the, the Billy only, and, and Ashley, and, they, and she's also trying to completely uh, undercut uh, those other, those other women in, in her circle of friends. Well, it's, it, it, she treats it, them like yeah. shit, and then she ends yeah. up alone. Well, this is the only time. The only time she sort of redeemed herself was when she had nothing. Yeah. Was when she was helping out as a nurse. When she was rebuilding her plantation from scratch, being her in charge, you know, doing you know stuff like that. That's when she sort of redeemed herself. But then she turned again. Yep. When she married Rhett. Yeah. She was after the money. Right, and and then she was also after, still after Ashley. Yes, he comes home from the war, and um, and he is, and she's instantly back in his arms, and mm -hmm. and and Rhett keeps catching her in his arms. I mean, and, and at the end, I mean, it really. It's just like a big crowbar. It's between the two of them, mm -hmm. and and this. This whole situation with Ashley is just like, and he starts packing to move. And, and you, you, you sort of feel sorry for Rhett. Because it's just, he, he's, he's gone out his way from his first time seeing her, saying, I want that, you know, I, I want her, as, you know, as my wife. Um, but then he's got a dark side as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, literally, the scene where he, picks her up and carries her upstairs. Is that a rape? Um, yeah. Because she, you know, she didn't want to go upstairs. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, you don't see anything like that. It's just, you know, carries her upstairs against her will sort of thing. Because um, when I was watching, I think, oh, that's a bit of a nasty side to him. Yeah. Um, but other other than that, he was he was one of the good guys. He was, yeah. I mean, she went to him. She went to him because she wanted to borrow money from him when he was a prisoner of war, right? You know, because all she was doing was chasing the money. Uh huh. So a very, I don't know, very nasty character in my opinion. Dark and and you know, no integrity. No, nope. No presence of mind to just be kind <clears throat> to anybody. <clears throat> She's just, yeah, it's gross. Yeah, I mean, and then they say, I mean, this it's the the goings on for four hours, but at the end of it, 
he just packs his bags and goes. He's had enough. And and she and that's where she's like uh, she utters the uh, the famous line. But where should I go? Where what should I do? Where should I go? And then he's like, frankly, my dear, I don't. I don't do that. <laughs> I mean, that is a famous line, a well well famous line. Or frankly, Scarlet, I don't give a damn. Anyway, frankly, my right? dear, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Yes, okay, that's right. So, um, the, yeah. the, that's like the big line, and, and it's like at the end, it's like, it's definitely, um, you know, the, you get a feeling of a little vindication with all of that. Mm. It, I mean, she was able to turn all these men back to being her. And also, as well. Rhett was her third husband. She's seen two off already. One, one who went to war and never came back. Yep. And, and then the hardware shop owner who, uh, who got um, killed, shot okay. in the street. That's right. Um, so she was working away for the money. Yep. And and Rhett and Rhett was Rhett had money from whatever he, whatever business he was in. <laughs> no, we don't we don't get really a whole bunch of his backstory. No, no. But we do know that he wasn't in the, he wasn't fighting to begin with. So he was staying out of that. Right. He was deserting. Yeah, yeah. That's he was deserting. But then he then he signed up, of course. Yep. But, um, I I'll tell you something though, the 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 scenery, the, the red skies and the the fields and that was wonderfully lit and done. And yeah, it was probably all done in studio. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so as you say, the, the, the poster behind you there with the orange sky, red sky, was brilliantly done with where they where they used it and they put them into shadows against the red sky. Right, like this one. Oh. Yeah, sort of see it there, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're all their lights on the other side of their faces. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, um, it is a... I can understand why people like the movie. Because, you know, it, it, it it's, uh, tells a, a good story, but, God, it does go... Did you, The version you watched, did you have the interlude... Uh huh. The, uh, I mean, some versions, the interlude's 20 minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because they, they just leave it up on the screen and have everybody be able to go out to, to the concession stand and buy some soda or drink. Get some ice cream. <clears throat> Piece of pizza. Um, yeah. Yes, I mean you had the intro music, the overture, then you had the exit music, and yep. um, but the music was brilliant. Um, yeah, but uh, I, I don't think that they were were uh, allowing the, the 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 trailer to be or to the the theater to be playing any trailers or having any advertisements uh, in right. the U.S. and like. Uh, some theaters did trailers, run trailers before a movie, and uh, also run uh, adverts for for local companies. Usually, just a, a like a business card kind of um, on the screen, uh, you know. Or, I mean, but I don't think that, that because there was all this mu music and the and like the 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 square titles on the that are sta stationary on the screen. I, uh, that, I think that that was just the way it was back then, um, is that they were trying to avoid local advertising and, and trailers for any other movies. They didn't want this one hitched to any other movies. And Selznick, uh, David Selznick or Selnick or whatever, he, that was his, uh, 
that was the way he, a lot of his movies were like like um, Ben Hur. Uh, did he do? Uh, but it was Ten Commandments. Uh, he did a lot of stuff that that, it, that had it, an it, overture and an and, a, and an intermission and an outro. Oh yeah, uh, producer David Selznick. Yeah, um, directed yeah. by Victor Fleming. Um, Actually, there was like six directors, and then there was and, and there was like three writers be, uh, beside the book writer. And, and many of these people weren't even credited. I mean, they had so much, it, they had so many irons in the fire, but I'm, I'm really glad that they only had one, one uh, you know. I mean, to as well for the cast, the, the main cast, you say you had Clark Gable was red. I think the only American in the main cast, uh, we said Vivian Lee was English, British, um, Leslie Howard was English. And then you had um, Olivia de Havilland as as Melanie, who uh, is it was English. So out of those four main people, it was only Clark Gable, a true American. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So well, all those all those were put, you know the airs and graces and stuff that was all becoming because they were British. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because um, and because they had really good, apparently really good voice coaches, they did sound southern. Yeah, they did sound like they were from Georgia. And uh, I said the 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 search for Scarlett Scal O'Hara took quite a while before the you know went for Vivian Lee. Oh yeah, yeah, apparently so. The uh, Took quite a while, but um, yeah, uh, and uh, there was those other two fellows at the beginning that there were her, that were her paramours that that uh, Brent Tarleton and Stuart Tarleton, mm -hmm. and yeah, and she was she had a, a lot of. Uh, yeah, she had a lot of people that, that were that she sucked into her whatever it was it's like a it's like a coming to my parlor isn't it yeah that the spider to the fly yeah um yeah anything else you want to say about gone with the wind yeah I'm, I'm what happened with frank kennedy was terrible too like that that whole thing where he ends up marrying her and then she, yeah, he, she dies and, or he, he dies and she goes mm -hmm. traipsing over to Red. That's just weird. So that was, was that the, was that the way that, um, that she lost the plantation to begin with? Is, is that he died? Yeah, I think so. Something like that, yeah. Um... I know a, a mother, a, was it tuberculosis? Yeah. Yeah, she passed away. That sent, sent her father a bit um, doolally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it left her to, uh, it was left to her to run the, the household, become the mistress of the household, shall we say, the master yeah. of the household. And then, so, uh, so then, the, then all these people were like, she, why is she riding around in coaches by herself? Why is she doing all this stuff by herself? And yeah. I thought that that was the only time that she was actually, you know. When she became independent. When she became independent and when she became, uh, you know, having to be self, uh, self-sufficient and self yeah. and not so self-centered. In order to be self-sufficient, you can't be self-centered. And in order to be you know, self-centered. You really won't be self-sufficient. And I, do you know what? I preferred that side of the character. Yeah. Yeah. She, I, I warmed to that character, but as I say, then she just turned again. Yep. So. Yeah. Agreed. <sighs> and I love. I don't. You know the. The names of it were funny, like Pity Pat and. Uh, 
was it the the, the young the girl. young the, the young slave girl was quite funny. Um, uh, was it Prissy? Yeah, Prissy. Yeah, so it, <laughs> convincing the doctor that she'd uh, helped in child labour before. Then she, she said, "No, I, I made it all up." <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was funny. And Big Sam. That was... Yeah, Big, Big Sam saved Scarlet from those two, um, what do you call them? Yanks. No, the, 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 the two what stopped her uh, coach. I think there was after to rob her, wasn't there, or something like that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I thought... Yeah, I thought that was to do with the, the war, but yeah. And then there was, uh, yeah, Prissy was, it's funny because you and I know uh, someone who, who uh, named Pissy. <laughs> so that's really, it's, that's kind of amusing. Now, now you've said it. I, okay. <laughs> I know, right? But now, now we've seen. I've got that image in my head now. <laughs> I know, I know. Here we are, uh, and and uh, I mean, this is just because we've we've known each other and, and had so so many other friends in common. Like that, that was just funny. Anyway, the other thing that that was uh, that was uh, really great was the the other guy who worked in the house. His name was Pork. Yeah, I mean. The names, gosh, the names. That's what the names were easy to remember. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, well. So, anything else before we go to final say? Um, yeah. I, I, Listen, I, I really, I'm going to, I'm really. Wanted to want to know what you're going to score this. Right. right. <laughs> so, okay. If we haven't got anything else to say about this movie, uh, we will go to final say and score. Okay. Over to you. Well, on on its merits, it because it's supposedly so award winning and so. Um, You know, I would like to say, like, I, I'd give it a four. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to give it a four. I may, I may actually, you know, I may drop it to a three before too long. I mean, I, I get, I get the, the, the big floofy dresses and everything and that, that putting on the corset is just like, but I, I prefer that in the pirate movies that I've seen more recently than, than this. Uh, it's just hard. It's just the whole thing is really hard to stomach and the way that pe the, all the, the words that people used. Yes, there was a, there was a, there was a couple of words in it. What um, I thought, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, the, the language used was atrocious and so yeah but, but what we've got to say is that that's what went on back then listen i know but it, i know it even goes on right now down the street from whatever yeah. but the, the 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 important thing is that um we try to elevate language because language defines so much of the reality of people's lives that how can then, then how can life change without a difference in language? And so like, that's what I really like. I really like the, the you know, the, the new pronouns and the, the new, you know, uh, you know, speaking about your lifestyle and that sort of thing. It's in, in your, and your gender and your sexual orientation and all of those things. And then the, then the aspect of, of different cultures and not being, you know, co-opting culture, but actually like, you know, being really supportive of it. The, the, the re, if you can, you know, scripture says, if you tame the tongue, you've tamed, you've tamed a, a beast set, set on fire from hell. You know, it's like th this can really, you know, damage and put, put, you know, knives in people's ways. 
so people can get killed on that stuff. So I, in my humble opinion, um, I think that, that oh God, the, the language is just rough. And um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it a four. Four, oh. Yeah, I, have, I don't know if I've ever gone that low. I was just thinking, have you ever been that low? Well, it's way too long for four, four hours to tell a tale like this, as I said before. They could have done it in two, two and a half hours. Um, I'm not knocking the acting at all. You know, the acting was spot on. Um, but for me, it's a very, very overrated movie. Huh? Um, I, I I know people absolutely love it, adore it. Um, think it's one of the best movies ever. I mean, America have, have have sort of said that because it was one of the first movies to be inducted into the um, is it the film institution? Yeah, the AFI. Yeah, it's it's one. I think it was one of the first twenty five back then when it, when they set it up. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, it's it's it's. A weird one. I'm gonna give it. It's enjoyable for what it is, but it's just a long slog. Um, I'm gonna give it five fiddly d's out of ten. Um, I mean, I'm not. So I'm not knocking Clack Gable or um, Vivian Lee or anybody like that because you know they were spot with the way they portrayed the nasty side of people, the loving side of people. It was all there, but uh, yeah, just way, way, way too long. Yep. I think this, uh, this might be the longest movie we've sat down and watched. <laughs> um, unless unless we're talking about the extended editions of the <laughs> oh of the Lord Love of the Rings. <laughs> But those were those actually were only like three and a half hours long, right? Yeah, that's roughly around about that. Yeah. Um, oh, crikey! Gee, but hey, we review anything, and Gone with the Wind it was. Yeah, so. we needed we needed to get this one out of the way. I'm um, definitely not going to sit down and watch it again. I I don't think I ever will. I I think it would take quite a difference of, of reality. I, yeah, I, I sat down at, I don't know, it must have been six o'clock at night during the week, started watching this. And he would say it was just before 10 o'clock <laughs> that, that, that the, the credits rolled sort of thing. Oh, oh and God. You, and you had to get up at five, so that, that cut down your, oh my heavens. Oh, my oh, heavenly days. Heavenly, I didn't have anything to do that night, but <laughs> so, so I was in the deep south. <laughs> yeah, I, had, I, I just split it up into two, two, two watching. Well, I, I should have done that, really, but hey-ho. Yeah. Uh, so that is our, our review of the 1939 movie and Gone with the Wind. Um, you guys out there, if you've got the the stomach and the and the you know what do you call it the the, the, will, the will the will the will to watch something what's four hours long please go knock out there yourself out. knock yourself out and then come back and tell us is that four hours what you'll never get back <laughs> um, <laughs> And also, if you don't really like it, you know, uh, just tell us because, I, I mean, I, I bet you there will be people who will show up in the chat going, or show up in the, the comments saying that this was a primal force of nature and whatever else they want to say, but I'm you like, can, I'm it, like, it, no. Every, every, every person has a different view of anything. Right. Um, this this movie could be someone's golden trophy, yes. you know what they put on their mantelpiece, pride of place, gone with the wind. Some of us almost really think, what a, <laughs> what, oh, a pile of, what a pile of what a pile of horse do do. Um, no shit. So, 
I'm, me and Susan are sort of in the middle of this one. <laughs> yeah. Four and five score here. You don't know, let me so. watch it again. I think we should. Oh, come on, life. Don't don't let this no, happen again. I'm, no, I'm sure we must have missed some things. No. No, thank you. Four hours. I think we have missed some stuff. So I think next week we'll do it again. <laughs> Don't make me do it. Five, four of them. <laughs> no, we won't. But yeah, you guys out there, uh, leave a comment below. Let us know if you know if you've seen the movie. Let us know what you thought of it. Um, we're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Insta. Um, if you're on, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please press press the bell button notification, and you will get a little ding. Um, every time we put a video up and if you want to be in our cast like this or in our groups on Facebook or wherever get in touch all you need to do is be 18 plus because you know certain things or certain things we watch or certain things we talk about we'd, we'd rather people be 18 plus and... yeah I mean like like the like the 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 relationship raping and the in the, the this one and the, the slavery and the treatment and the, the speaking threatening like belts and things for people and mm -hmm. little domestic abuse the whole the whole nine yards it's just such a and the, the fucking language jesus that, christ the fucking language susan. is horrible that language from susan as well <laughs> i know i'm i'm just i'm just and I'm after we finish there, I'm just going to tell her to wash her mouth out with soap. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, but also as well, when you if you want to join us, please have a PC, laptop, uh, tablet, or a mobile phone with a working camera and microphone, and you're good to go because we're using that. We use the Zoom app. I think you know we've got to be using, eighteen. Yeah, oh yeah, got to be 18. We've been using the Zoom app for oh, good six years now or more. Um, well before the, uh, the COVID generation discovered it. Um, so we're pioneers in this. Yes, and, and, we, and we have, uh, you know, demonstrated its, its capabilities throughout our, our podcasting time. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we haven't really had any problems with it. Occasionally something happens, but I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, Zoom has been good to us. Yep, agreed. Um, so that's that's it, I think. Uh, anything else, Susan? Oh, well, then all we have to do is say goodbye to you all and uh, fiddle-dee-dee.